Hello everyone, Paul with Doc's Jewelers here bringing you part two of my five part series on how to make this sterling silver statement ring. This ring features a natural Dalmatian gemstone set in fine silver with a decorative border and a split shank. If you missed part one of this series, I'll have a link posted in the description below. Or better yet, subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon to get notifications of future videos. In part one I discussed material selection and recommended tools, and in this video I'll go over how to form and solder the bezel and back plate all together. As always, feel free to leave any questions in the comment section below. I'd also like to note that in silversmithing there are many different ways to accomplish the same end result. I may use one technique in this video, but do it a little different in another video, or I may just not know another way to do it. We are always learning, so if you have experience with another method or a suggestion, please by all means share it in the comments below. I promise it's not going to offend me one bit, and it may just teach me or someone else a little something extra. So let's get started. Alright, we're ready to get started on the bezel that will surround the stone. In part 1 we talked about how to select the correct material width and gauge for the bezel. We also talked about how the stone is the foundation of your project and how we work everything around it. For this project we've selected a 26 gauge 3 16 inch wide piece of fine silver for the bezel. When cutting your bezel wire to length, you want to make sure to first start with a nice clean square edge. To achieve that, you're going to want to use a pair of flush cutting side snips. Make sure that the beveled part of the cutting blades face away from the part that you want to use. Otherwise, you'll be left with a sharp chamfered edge with less surface area for the solder to flow. You then want to begin carefully wrapping the wire tightly around the stone, being careful to avoid any kinks or sharp bends. Once you have wrapped the wire completely around the stone overlapping where you started, you can hold the wire in position with your forefinger and thumb. While continuing to hold the wire in place, mark the location where you wish to make a cut with a fine point permanent marker. Again, using your flush cutting snips with the beveled cutting edges away from the part of the wire you want to use. Take your time and be careful to hold the snips perfectly perpendicular to the wire so you get a nice square cut. After you've made your cuts, push the two ends together to make sure you have a nice fit with 100% contact along both cut edges with no visible light showing through the seam. You'll then want to test fit the bezel wire around the stone to make sure it wasn't cut too short or too long. You want it to be tight, but not too tight as it will be difficult to set the stone later on. Finding the correct fit will come with time and practice. Set the bezel aside and we'll begin working on the back plate. As mentioned in part 1, we're going to use a piece of 22 gauge sterling silver sheet for the back plate. Start by placing the stone on the silver sheet and roughly marking where you'll cut it to size. Make sure to leave enough room around the edges for a decorative rope border later on. You can make quick work out of cutting the back plate with a good pair of heavy duty shears, but I prefer to use a jeweler saw as it doesn't curl the edges up like the shears requiring you to flatten back out the sheet afterwards. It really doesn't take that much longer with the saw and you get a much better end result, especially if you step up to around a number 5 blade. I'll leave this real time just so you can see how long it actually takes. Don't forget to lube the saw blade as you cut. 
Now that we have our piece cut, we're going to want to get it prepped to solder. Your silver may look shiny and clean, but odds are it's not. We need to remove any oils on the sheet left behind from manufacturing and or your hands. To do this, we'll use a piece of 400 grit wet dry sandpaper. Just lightly sand the piece in the palm of your hand until you see a uniformly clean surface, being careful not to bend the sheet. Now that we have the sheet ready to solder, we'll move on to soldering the bezel. The first thing you want to do is line the cut edges up where you'll be soldering. Just carefully bend the ends towards each other. There will be some spring tension keeping the ends from fitting tight. To reverse this, just bend one of the ends just under the other and gently pull back and realign the ends, letting the new tension hold the joint tight. After you've made a tight joint using a pair of nylon grip parallel pliers if you have them, or a pair of smooth jaw pliers to crimp down on the joint, making a flat spot on the joint. This helps to remove any twists in the ends and makes for a seamless solder joint. Don't worry about the flat spot, we'll form that background later. That little mark you see here in the top isn't a gap, just the mark where we made earlier with the Sharpie marker. Now gently set the bezel aside somewhere where it won't get damaged. I'll be using a very small piece of hard solder that I'll be cutting from this solder sheet with my heavy duty shears. You need to use hard solder for this joint so that we don't risk the joint flowing again when we solder the rest of the ring down the road. For every soldering application after this, we'll step down each time to a softer solder with a lower flow point temperature. By doing this, we won't have to heat the piece as much each time, risking previous solder joints to flow again, causing a lot of headache. You're going to need a surface to solder on. In part one, we went over the various types available. I like to place my soldering surface on one of these rotating fixtures when possible. This is actually an inexpensive piece of hardware made for a Lazy Susan if you're familiar with that. I believe I got this one on Amazon. Make sure your soldering surface is clean of any debris or old solder. You don't want to create any more work for yourself down the road if you don't have to. With a pair of tweezers, place a small chip of hard solder on the surface. Now very carefully, not to disturb the tight joint you just created, place the bezel on top of the chip with the joint directly over and on top of the chip. Mostly for ease of application, I like to use a liquid flux like this for this operation. It's easy to apply with one of these little squeeze bottles and I don't have to worry about the solder chip bouncing away as the flux starts to boil because the bezel is holding it down. Now it's time to light your torch. I'll be using my Smith Little Torch with a number 5 tip today. This little torch setup is an oxygen propane system, but you can use the torch of your choice. Let's try that again. I like to start by evenly heating around the bezel just to the outside. We're basically heating the soldering surface and indirectly heating the silver. Unlike gold, silver likes to have uniform heat across the entire piece. After I feel I preheated the silver enough, I start to concentrate more in the area I want the solder to flow. 
Occasionally I'll make a few passes around the whole bezel again to keep the temperature up. Solder always flows towards the heat source. Hopefully by heating from the top down with a solder chip below it, it will climb directly up the seam as it flows towards the flame. And there it goes. I think it looks pretty good. 100% penetration and not a lot of excess solder to deal with later. Now to quench it in some cold water and soak it in my pickle solution for a few minutes to clean off any excess flux or contaminants. This bezel is made out of fine silver so it won't oxidize and tarnish as bad as sterling wood but it doesn't hurt to pickle it the same way. And there it is all cleaned up. The solder completely filled the joint is just a little proud of the surface that's almost exactly what you want. Not enough solder will leave a recess or gap in the joint that more than likely won't be an option to file away as it will remove too much material making the bezel thickness not uniform. First take a flat needle file. I'm going to use the flat side of this small ring file. Place the joint that should still be relatively flat and place it on a solid surface like this. Use your file to remove the excess solder at the joint. This is important if you still have that little ridge inside when you go to roll the bezel over the stone you'll end up with a little bump or gap that at that point is almost impossible to remove without starting over. Now take your stone and place it on a flat surface. You should be able to rough fit the bezel back around the stone with your fingers. Now we need to form the bezel back to the shape of the stone. I use this little scrap piece of wood to do just that. Whatever you use, just make sure it's softer than the silver so you don't mark the bezel up. With a rocking motion like this, I work around the bezel, removing any kinks and forming it back to the shape of the stone until you're happy with how it looks. Now we need to make sure that the bottom of the bezel that will be soldered to the back plate is perfectly flat. Solder flows by means of capillary action. It needs to wick its way through the joint and usually doesn't fill gaps. It is very important that the entire surface of the bezel bottom make contact with the back plate to get an effortless solder joint. Take a piece of 400 grit again and place it on a flat surface. Do not do this with the palm of your hand or an irregular surface. Leave the stone in the bezel so it holds its shape and with the tip of your fingers try applying downward pressure to only the bezel. Try not to push down on the stone. With this particular stone and the fact that the bottom won't be visible I'm not worried if I scuff this stone up a little bit. If you have a more delicate stone or a stone where you're going to expose the bottom, you may want to protect that surface with a few layers of masking tape. While gently applying downward pressure, sand the stone in a figure eight motion, checking often until you can clearly see the surface is uniform. With the stone still in place to hold the bezel shape, we need to file away the excess solder on the outside of the bezel and sand it smooth. Hold the stone and bezel assembly firmly between your thumb and forefinger so nothing can move and grab yourself a small flat file again. You want to file with an arcing motion, not a flat or lateral motion, as this will create a flat spot. Now file the outside of the bezel at the joint until the seam is blended away and is no longer visible. After filing, I like to use a sanding stick to remove the majority of the file marks. Now you want to very carefully remove the bezel from the stone and set it aside somewhere safe. It's important that you remove the stone out the way you're going to put it back in, through the top side. Do not apply any force to the bezel while removing it. If you alter the shape of the bezel in any way and go ahead and continue soldering, you risk that the stone will not fit properly or even at all. If you think you may have altered the shape, Go back and fit the stone again before you proceed. Now it's time to get set up to solder the bezel to the back plate. I prefer to always solder from the underside when possible. That way I can concentrate the heat on the larger heavier gauge back plate, reducing the risk of damaging the bezel or already soldered bezel joint. To do this I use my same turntable setup and place a soldering tripod with heavy duty steel grate on top. With this setup I can work from below and rotate the workpiece if necessary. After the tripod is set up, I place the back plate with the clean side I sanded facing up. I then use a paste flux such as this handy flux. I apply an even coat with a simple paintbrush to the entire surface. 
Using your tweezers, carefully place the bezel in the center of the sheet. Make sure you have equal distance around all four sides. I like to place the bezel solder joint away from the direction I'll be working from so I can better see it. I work my heat from the opposite side of the joint and try not to concentrate as much heat under the bezel joint as possible. For this soldering operation, I'll be using a medium wire solder. I find this much easier and efficient than using chip solder. When soldering, faster is usually better, but I understand it takes some practice. Keep your wire soldering and a soldering pick close by in case you need to adjust the part or, or rotate the piece. I'll be using my Smith Little Torch again with a number 7 tip and some pretty intense heat. Make sure to turn your ventilation system back on and go ahead and light your torch. I'm right handed. I hold the torch with my left hand so I can use my dominant hand for all the precision work. Now adjust your torch to an intense neutral flame. Start by focusing your flame underneath the back plate, continuously moving around the entire plate. Continue to heat the plate until the flux starts to turn black, then goes to clear, then the silver starts to turn a nice straw color. At this point, start to focus your heat more towards the center of the piece as you continue to move around. Remember, solder always flows towards the heat. At this point, lightly touch the solder wire to the back plate as close to the bezel without touching it. The solder should melt or flow in puddle like this. If it all goes well once the solder reaches the bezel, it'll be wicked into the joint and start to flow the entire length around. If you are precise with your torch, you can almost pull the solder all the way around like a magnet, so to speak, as the solder will always follow the flame. If it doesn't make it all the way around, you may have to apply a little more solder to that area. Take your time and make sure you have a good solid solder joint all the way around. Be careful not to overheat the pieces, it may cause the joint and the bezel to reflow separating or worse yet, melt the back plate. Once you have a good joint, remove the heat immediately and shut the torch off. After you've inspected the piece, pick it up with a pair of copper tongs or tweezers, quench it in cold water, and then put it in the pickle solution for around 10 minutes or so. After 10 minutes, remove the piece from the pickle solution, draining off any excess. Dip it in a baking soda water solution to neutralize the pickle, and then rinse it off with some clean water. And here it is. I've got a nice solder joint between the bezel and back plate, and the joint in the bezel is still intact. Now to move on to part three of this video series, where we'll add a twisted rope border, trim the back plate, and get it ready for a ring shank.